are Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Are you ready to go? Would you like to go home? Should we go and see Lily and Itty Bitty Kitty? Where are they? Should we go and find them? What a beautiful morning. Feasibly, I could fit a few more jars of jam in here. I've got various jars of jam hidden around. For example, there's one there. <laughs> but I think we're good to go. What? <laughs> Bye. Bye. See Bye. See you back home, Sky. <laughs> okay, we good. Bye. Safe journey. And we're off. <laughs> Guarda avanti. <laughs> <laughs> Ti riprendo allo specchio, dai. Puoi parlare. Che succede adesso? We are now heading back to the Euro Tunnel in Folkestone and we have a train to catch at 12.20 and we're going to try and get to Dijon or somewhere maybe just past Dijon today and that's where we will stop tonight. Yeah. It's a little bit foggy today. Not too bad. No. Have we got Holly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sta qua, non l'abbiamo vista. Okay. <laughs> okay. Only is checked in. And now it's possible to come back in Italy or in France. Are you ready to go now? Yeah? We've been granted permission to get on an earlier train, so we're on the 11.20 instead of the 12.20, which is brilliant because that means that we've got an extra hour driving in France today because we want to try and get as far as we can. And we're just about to board the train. I can also tell you that there were no problems whatsoever. Um, we didn't get asked any questions. We didn't get grilled. We didn't even have to show the certificate of honor that you're supposed to print out for the French border police that tell you that you swear that you haven't had any COVID symptoms, nothing. They just flick through our passports and let us go. Easy as pie. <laughs> For those of you that missed the video when we were coming to England, um, if you haven't seen the Eurotunnel before, it's a train. So we basically drive onto the train and it's just like a big open tunnel and you sit in your car and you go to France. Oh, we're going up. There's two levels, so there's a lower level and a higher level. Oh, we're starting to go And then you put your handbrake on, you switch off your engine, and you sit and relax for 25 minutes. And no, I'm sorry to say, it does not look like this. This is the best part of the trip. <laughs> White chocolate chip cookies with caramel. Mm -hmm. mm, they're really good. Really, really good. <laughs> and tea, hot tea. Sei terribile. Poi dici che io mangio sempre. Second breakfast. Che ha detto? Mi sono chiusi. Ero preoccupato. Sembra strettamente forbidden to uscire dalla macchina and non ci sono i bagni. Okay, sta dicendo in italiano? Lo dovevo dire in inglese. Lo stavo dicendo. Ok. Ok, vi volevo far vedere la differenza tra la camera anteriore e la camera posteriore dell'iPhone. Questa è la camera anteriore. Si vede non molto bene. Il pezzettino che ho fatto prima era la camera dall'altra parte, posteriore. E si vede molto meglio. Quindi potete vedere bene come Niki mangia e beve, mangia biscotti e beve il suo tè. Sì, si vede molto meglio. Niki, 
Jim and Dana. Procedi in direzione sud-ovest e su tunnel sulla mano, poi prosegui in dritto. Haven't you? Have you had a boring day? We'll go for a walk soon. We will. We have arrived in Dijon. We are in a hotel by the station, it's just an Ibis. Just easy, comfortable, nice bed, small room. We're going to have dinner and then we're going to take a walk into the old town. Although it was minus two when we were driving up here and it's probably a little bit colder now. Um, so we'll see how far we can get because <laughs> Carlos not very good with the cold. He is currently replying to all your comments from. No, 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 it's impossible. No, not <laughs> we have time. He's replying to some comments um, from a video that just went out, and uh, that's pretty much all I've got to tell you. The drive was fine. It was very, very frosty everywhere. There wasn't much snow, but it was frost all the way along, and it was very pretty. So we're just having a little rest now and then we're gonna go and go go and get some dinner and go for walkies! Yeah! Well he's been very very good. It was a very boring day for you, wasn't it? Okay. Okay, so we're going for a lovely after dinner walk in the centre of Dijon. It is minus two degrees, it feels like minus six is what it says. I'm absolutely fine. I've even got my fingers out. He's dying slowly. <laughs> <ride> no, non sto morendo, ma ho freddo. Lo dico sempre, non mi piace il freddo. Lo so, voi che siete in Canada fa un... di freddo, non ho detto la parola. Ma va bene. Sì, vuoi dire qualcosa? Sì, abbiamo decisamente sbagliato albergo, dovevamo andare là. Non penso che Hollywood fosse allowed. Dijon is in the centre of the Burgundy vineyards and has many beautiful old buildings, some from as far back as the 1400s. Gustave Eiffel, who built the Eiffel Tower, was born here and the famous Dijon mustard is mostly made in this region. I think we have found the old town centre. Isn't it pretty? Dijon is beautiful. The buildings are absolutely stunning here and there's nobody around. It's just me, Holly, Carlo and a lot of Uber Eats delivery boys on bicycles. The whole town centre here seems to be completely pedestrianised. And um, there's just so many amazing buildings. I want to explore it all. It's just a little bit cold. You'll notice in the next couple of videos that everywhere we visit is very quiet. There's hardly any people around at all. And this is simply because it is January, it's off season, and everything is very quiet at the moment. People are taking time to have a break and getting ready for the new season, which normally kicks in round about Easter time. We have found three little froggies singing to 
three little children. Credo che significa o rappresenti qualcosa, chissà che cosa, sono curioso adesso. <laughs> Io sto morendo di freddo. <laughs> <laughs> and it feels like it's starting to snow a little bit, so we're going to make our way back to the hotel and possibly sit and watch a film for once. I've got this on probably because we have to, but also because it keeps the face warm. Questo posto è molto bello. Ho provato a far volare il drone, ma dopo due minuti mi sono ghiacciate le dita. Io non sono abituato. Ci sono meno due gradi, mi sembra meno due, meno tre, non lo so. Per me è freddissimo. <laughs> ok, andiamo. Very pretty town, though. Yeah, yeah. Ok, it is the next morning. It's very foggy outside, still minus two degrees. We're just planning what we're going to do next. And we think we're going to... Avignon. 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 We think we'll go and drive down. It's questo e quattro de mezzo. Sì. It's four and a half hours to Avignon. We might stop on the way. There's a little town called chalon sur saone Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we might stop there. I surprised him last night because I arrived in the hotel and I said, um, hang on, I have to think. Nous avons, nous avons une réservation pour ce soir et une pétition. Eh, c'est stata brava. È stata brava, davvero. <laughs> It's funny because I studied French in school, like most English kids do at school, and then probably forgot everything and never used it and came to Italy and learned Italian. But somewhere in the backs of my mind, it's still there. So, yes, that was fun last night. And my pétition is here and she has not had her breakfast yet but um i've taken her out for a little walk this morning and we're going to go and discover avignon before heading off to where we're going to stay tonight ah volevo dire che c'era molto altro da vedere qua solo che è pieno di nebbia non vale la pena yeah very foggy outside it's a shame hopefully it will be sunnier down south sperando che avignon non c'è la nebbia <laughs> What's happening? No, la so presa la babbeleggia, ma questa è la tua la mia perché sembra un vibratore. Il mio non vibra. Facciamo vedere che cos'è. Ok. <laughs> Sei acceso da solo. I'm just feeding Holly. She's got one of those bowls that's supposed to stick to the floor, but it doesn't, so she's been chasing it around the room. If I let go. So I have to stand here and stop the bowl. We're back in the car. We're trying to find our way out of Dijon. passing through Lyon. Siamo appena usciti dal parcheggio che, che era qui, l'uscita è questa, e, e guardate cosa c'è qua, è incredibile! We are on the hunt for a wine shop because Luca has asked for some bottles of Chateau Neuf de Pape and we have to try and find some now and it looks like nearly everything's closed so we're walking around hoping that we'll find some somewhere How very French. 
We're just heading back towards the car and luckily I found a tiny little wine shop here. It's literally one of the only shops in town open at the moment. Found the wine that Luca wanted, got some, and now we can go and explore a bit more. We thought we would come and visit the Bridge of Avignon. It's the remains of a bridge that started being built in the 12th century and took several centuries to build. Originally it was 920 metres long and it had 22 arches, of which only four remain today. In the famous song, one dances round and round, but as the bridge was only four metres wide, there probably wasn't much room for dancing. It more likely happened in an inn that was under one of the arches. Ecco quello che succede nella vita. Stamattina c'era tanta nebbia e non ho fatto volare il mio drone perché non si vedeva niente. E adesso c'è troppo vento per far volare il drone. We are now back in the car and we are heading to a place in France that is spelt A-P-T. Apt? A-P-T? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> in uh, French, maybe <laughs> is different. Apt? Apt. Apt. Anyhow, there is, um, lives some friends, Darren and Dala. Darren is the guy who fixed my computer. If you've been around for a couple of years or so, you might remember me having serious laptop problems where my old one died on me because it couldn't cope with the editing and then I bought a new one and the editing didn't work and I went and took that back to Mac and I got another new one and that didn't work and then finally after about two months of going back and forth with Apple they admitted that there was a problem with the 2020 MacBook Pro and the editing and they didn't know how to fix it and they left it at that and Darren got it working for me so it's thanks to Darren that I've been able to make all these videos and we're going to go and stay with them because they live in Apt in Provence Quindi in poche parole ha trovato un tecnico e ha trovato anche un amico. Sì. Bello. Tra 800 metri alla rotonda, prendi la prima uscita su Route de Seigneur. E tu albero di pini, qua. Qua. almeno a destra o a sinistra? Sinistra! E questo è destra! <ride> Ma Dio mio! Non sono incapace, che navigatore di merda! Ok, that was not right. The navigator sent us off in the wrong direction. Hello! Hello! Adesso mi vedi! No, eh. Yeah, the navigator got that wrong, so we're gonna try again. I've phoned Dala and we are supposed to go a bit further up the road and apparently we've got to look for two pine trees. So everybody look for two pine trees! Volevo dire, io non ho sbagliato strada, il navigatore mi ha portato qua e la posizione del navigatore l'ha mandata a Darren, giusto? Sì. Ok. Ecco, ce l'abbiamo fatta. <ride> ce l'abbiamo fatta! Yeah. Good morning, Holly Pooh. Where, where are we now? This is what we have woken up to this morning, this beautiful room, and this is our view. In the kitchen, we have been left this fantastic range of breakfasts. Wonderful. 
We've had breakfast, we are all up and dressed and Dal and Darren are going to take us exploring Provence. Let's vieni, vieni, go. Vieni. Andiamo, sono eccitato, andiamo, andiamo. A bit of a sprawling, it's probably the biggest town out here. No, no many steps. Again, where everything's difficult. We've driven up to Gourds. Is that how you say it? Gourds? Gourds. Gourds. Um, one of the things. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let me say that again. Gourd. We've driven up to Gourd. This is one of the most beautiful towns in France, apparently. This is Darren. Darren is the amazing guy who fixed my computer when I had all those awful computer problems in 2020. And he's saved me quite a few times since then. And we've finally come to stay with them and Dala's over there, she doesn't want to be seen. I'm going to quickly show her. <laughs> and we're going to wander around and explore this beautiful little town now. Joan of Arc. We were hoping there was going to be a farmer's market here today, but unfortunately there's just a couple of stalls. Darren and Dala have a secret spot where they like to sit and they've been coming here for years and years. They're showing it to us and I can already see that it is fantastic. But it's um, just a little ledge that they come and sit on to look at the view. I'm going to turn the camera around. You won't like that. Now, what's just caught my eye is this house right here with this balcony that is literally a rock just jutting right out there. Look at that. Favourite little ledge spot. Yeah. We accidental on it. Yeah. We are back in the car and we are now on our way to Roussillon which is where red pigments come from. So if you've ever seen any old, olden days paintings or anything with red pigments in them, this is where they would come and dig up the red to make the paints. And already, just as we come into the car park, you can see the incredibly red earth here. Um, Dana actually warned me to not wear white trainers because they will end up pink. So I've put my boots on today. Now I know that everything is closed, all the shops are shut here, but I'm really glad that we've come here at this time of year because it just means we get to see it quiet and peaceful and Dallas just said that in the summer it's absolutely heaving here with the uh, tourists and visitors so I think we're really lucky to be able to see it like this. Just walking down here and I just spied, look at that terrifying little staircase. I'm sure it was fine once upon a time, but I wouldn't want to be walking that late at night. But apparently there is not supposed to be snow on the ground. But that's all right, we're in January. I love you. We were going to do the Ochre Trail, which is just through this gate here that is closed. Unfortunately, it is closed. We can't go. But there's a cliff right here in front of me that gives you an idea of what it's like in there. You can see all the different colours coming through, the yellows and the reds. And there's even like a dark plum colour there. I'm just looking in this shop window and these are some of the pigments that they sell. It's unfortunately really hard to see because of the reflections in the window, but they look beautiful. 
but unfortunately it is all closed so we will just have to come back later on in the year <laughs> well seeing as that's closed and it's right next to the cemetery <laughs> we thought we'd show Carlo the French cemetery wow these are all your and their stores this is all they do is sell headstones and these that one tomb right there is just so pretty. I love that. We've decided to stop for lunch, trying to convince Carla to get some snails. <laughs> <laughs> We are in France. No? <laughs> yeah. Well, when in Rome. <laughs> mm, that's different. Escargot have arrived. They smell wow. absolutely incredible. <sighs> Makes me want to use L'odore is fantastico. Okay, now you have to eat one okay. on camera. There's no, there's no shell. On camera. So it's, 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 it's really hot. Stab it. Maybe. No, it shouldn't be too hot. It's all garlic and butter. Better than grandma's? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? So good. If per la tua prima lumaca? No, la mia prima, io la mangiavo spesso. Okay. It's so hot. <laughs> chewy. No, not chewy compared Tell to the ones I had in England. There used to be a little restaurant near to my dad's that did them and they were much chewier there. They're really tender. Really they delicate. smell incredible. I mean, they're just basically garlic. Yeah, no, Brian. <laughs> garlic, parsley. Mm. That is all garlic. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be healthy. Mm, nothing chewy about it. No. We're mm. hot, though. Yeah. Mm. 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 We've now driven up to the village of Lacoste, which has nothing to do with the t-shirts of Lacoste, but the castle at the top of the village is owned by the fashion designer Pierre Cardin, and he bought this castle here behind me, and he has done it all up. There's an art centre inside. Go on. He's now, though. He just died a few years ago. Yeah, oh, did he? Yeah, he's fine. Oh, okay. And there's some very strange little sculptures. Little, I say little, that's absolutely massive. As Darren was saying, there's, it's absolutely full of lavender fields down here. There's tons and tons of grapevines as well, but fields and fields of lavender. And in the summer, this is the area where apparently Darla's saying all the Instagrammers come with their makeup hair and photographers and they put their dresses on and have all their Instagram photos taken in the beautiful lavender fields. Now obviously at the moment we're in January and there's no lavender in the fields. There's just the little plants. You can see the plants but there's no flowers. Um, but I am sorely tempted to go and take a photo in the dead lavender fields. <laughs> Might do that afterwards. Darren has very kindly brought us to one of the lavender fields so we can show you exactly what it looks like in the winter. And this is it. Lines and lines and lines of lavender. Can you imagine what this is like in the summer? Stunning. It must be full of bees as well. Darla said that it is impossible to actually sit here and have a picnic because you would get swamped by bees. Just before we leave Provence, I wanted to show you that I've had another fantastic little gift basket, except it's a champagne bucket, which is very, very fitting for this area. And it is filled with things from this area. And I just wanted to go through them with you because it's just so thoughtful. Um, and Dada put this together, must've been last minute because I only told them about two days before we were coming. But anyhow, we've got some butter from this area. And I know that sounds like a weird thing to give somebody, but the butter here is amazing. So that's coming home with us. We've got some uh, One Mama fig uh, jam, and this is the sort of fig jam that you would use with cheeses, not on toast. So I'm very excited to use that because just as we were leaving England, my dad came running out with two, um, two cheddar cheeses covered in wax. So we've got a lot of cheese with us, and that will go really nicely with that. 
this is a beautiful little pot and it's salt, it's local salt, but isn't that lovely? I mean, that just looked really nice in the kitchen. And this is fantastic. Now, you probably know that in France, there's all sorts of brocantes where um, these like secondhand antiques markets that they do on a Saturday or a Sunday, and you can go there and pick up all sorts of things for the house. Um, paintings and cutlery and uh, linens and stuff very very cheap and um, really really good finds unfortunately we were here the wrong day to visit a brocante because that was one of the things I would have loved to do we'll just have to come back for that but Dala found these in a brocante and bought them for me now there's four these are napkins and they have I don't know if you can see that an embroidered N and a C embroidered together so Nikki and Carla and she saw them and knew they were for me so that is just such a special little gift and of course there's some mild mustard this is from Dijon we didn't have time to visit the mustard place in Dijon well it was everything was closed when we were there because we got there late in the evening but this is the mustard that they make in Dijon and couldn't go to Provence without having a lavender soap so I've got this big, big bar of extra mild lavender soap, which is lovely, from Provence. And there's two little honey soaps here. They're vegetable soaps, just little honey ones, which are very, very sweet. And you can see this has already been opened. It's a little packet of local biscuits, lovely French biscuits. So, and then it all comes in this champagne bucket. And I didn't have a champagne bucket at home. So Dara says that she uses these in the kitchen. I mean, actually, this would be great to keep onions in or something like that. And I will definitely be putting that to good use. You will be seeing this around in my kitchen. So now I have to somehow fit all of this in our very, very, very full car. <laughs> Try and fit it all back in the very, very full bucket as well. But yes, this has all got to go back in the car now. And we're about to head off to our next destination. It is time to leave Provence and carry on our journey. Ciao! Ciao!